you so much, Jane, and to my co-editors for being here with me. And I'd also like to first acknowledge that you contributed a wonderful box or sub-entry to the entry term translation. And I'm very honored that Gayatri Chakraborty Spivak is here. Uh, she wrote a small uh, insert. I, I mean, some of them, they're not small and necessarily in size. It delivers a lot of firepower. It's on planetarity, and that appears under the entry uh, Welt or world. And I also just want to acknowledge Kevin McCann, who uh, began uh, work with us as a research assistant and spent hours with us looking at, you know, especially German citations, and to Manoa Finston, who just, you know, said he could help out and then ended up holding a gigantic bag. He was, seemed to be the only one with the kind of psycho uh, encyclopedic memory to keep it all together. So uh, it, it, there are, the translators are, I, I don't know if Christian Hubert is here, but that th this couldn't have happened without them. So please just bear in mind, we didn't translate it, but we did uh, more than just review the work of the translators, and we can talk more about what that involved in the discussion. I, I just have a few remarks that focus on the politics of translation, which has always been a topic of importance to me. Um, I've always thought of, of uh, something that was, that this this book enabled as, as doing things with political untranslatables. Um, and, and that motivated the book I was writing on, uh, alongside of it. And, and there are quite good representations of political untra untranslatables in, in, in this volume. Uh, politics policy, which explored differences between the political as it emerged in classic political theory, and the so-called pragmatic politics of political science. Uh, praxis, marked historically, of course, by Marx, Engels, Gramsci, Tronti, and Wittgenstein. Pravda, meaning truth, but often as the entry notes excluded from certain uh, encyclopedias of, of philosophy in Russia because of its association with the house, with the official newspaper Pravda. Uh, Ragion di Stato, reason of state, central to rethinking sovereign power from Machiavelli to Schmidt and the latest iterations of Realpolitik. Um, and uh, subordinost, conciliation or solidarity associated with personalist socialism. And I just give you an array, there are of course many more, uh, to show how it resonates between uh, political actualities and historical events and uh, more densely technical etymologically oriented entries. Political untranslatables are, of course, everywhere implicated in the event. And I was struck by an article that um, focused on the term Maidan, the Ukrainian term for central square, foregrounded in an essay that will come out in the New York Review of Books by Timothy Snyder. And um, he, he writes, what does it mean to come to the Maidan? The square is located close to some of the major buildings of government and is now a traditional site of protest. Interestingly, the word Maidan exists in Ukrainian, but not in Russian, but even people speaking Russian use it because of its special implications. In origin, it's just the Arabic word for square, a public place, but a Maidan now means in Ukrainian what the Greek word agora means in English, not just a marketplace where people happen to meet, but a place where they deliberately meet, precisely in order to deliberate, to speak, and to create a political society. During the protests, the word Maidan has come to mean the act of public politics itself, so that, for example, people who use their cars to organize public actions and protect other protesters are called auto Maidan. So you see here uh, in this example from kind of a, you know journalism that Maidan in its philology connects Arabic, Greek, and Ukrainian notions of public politics. It's site-specific yet connected transpolitically to places of assembly and occupation all over the world where insurrection is erupting, Tahir, Taksim, Madrid's Puerta del Sol, Zuccotti Park. It designates a particular instance of competing nationalisms in Eastern Europe, as well as strategic solidarity among regionally, ethnically, and religiously conflictive groups. 
It's a lodestone of language politics, as well as a breakout scene of sexual politics with feminists and LGBT volunteers well represented in the hospitals and the hotlines. And the sexual politics are a particularly important feature of Maidan's untranslatability, for as we know, gay bashing in Russia is part of a Kremlin-backed effort to gal galvanize anti-pro-European Union factions, prompting groups that might otherwise be strongly critical of Western neoliberalism to strategically endorse it. The Maidan political map is thus fi configured unpredictably according to its case-sensitive retranslation. And you could say that, you know, of course, key words are always inflected by language. But most dictionaries of philosophy would tend to forget the politics of translation in adopting transhistorical approaches to concepts. So this is a very different kind of enterprise here. All right, now let me just move on to my example, and, um, which is the, the term gender, which I, uh, and I'll just say a little bit about that. So the French edition contained a cluster of terms relating to genre, which derives from the Greek genos and also the Latin calc genus, genus. And we have the biological sense found in Homer's reference to race and bloodline, Aristotle's opposition between eidos and genre, the latter treated as a preeminent, preeminent category of category theory or the category as such. There's the idea of general, uh, in the sense of generic properties that produces the distinction between singularity and universalism or the universal. And another thread line leads th to the German Geschlecht, which can be used to designate species, race, being, Dasein, genre, gender, and much more. In his entry on Geschlecht, Marc Crepon unravels the terms genealogy in Kant, Herder, Heidegger, and Derrida the last of whom wrote a celebrated essay, Geschlecht, Sexual Difference, Ontological Difference, that was and remains crucial to gender theory. And it's this piece that challenges Heidegger's genderless construct of Dasein. It would become also the starting point for Catherine Malabou's rethinking of plasticity from the Greek plasine to mold as a philosophy for regenerative or plastic power in the gendering of ontology, and she wrote the entry on plasticity in the, in the volume. One would probably expect to find neither gender nor sex in a conventional encyclopedia of philosophy, but we do find them here. The gender essay, co-authored by Monique David Menard, a French psychoanalyst, and Penelope Deutscher, an Australian feminist philosopher who teaches at Northwestern, was surprisingly limited it focused on how gender evolved as a term of general usage in the 90s, set off against sex as biological a priori. And it argued, rather unconvincingly in my view, that gender eventually turned into a euphemism for sex. The entry on sex by Geneviève Fraisse, though enlivened by an insert by Françoise Baribar on masculine, feminine, neuter, that raised the issue of gender assignment and by implication reassignment in grammar itself was problematic in other ways. The British philosopher Stella Sanford, who was close to the dictionary project, having worked closely on the entry on the subject, picked up on this and made a critique of Fraisse's entry in an essay published in Radical Philosophy. So taken by her critique, I asked her to write a box for the sex entry that would polemically engage the Fraisse essay. And basically the point here is that in English, sexual difference is empirical. Oh, wow. <laughs> Fantastic. I can hold it. Really? Yeah. Um, it, no, you don't have to do that. I, I can hold it, actually. <laughs> um, that, that every time we say sexual difference in English, it's empirical. And she says, very funny, in, um, that in Fraisse's ascription, the English sex is a plain and stodgy pudding, the just dessert, perhaps, of an empiricist philosophical tradition. <laughs> Though Fraisse, as Sanford acknowledges, is aware that the English gender is a contemporary philosophical event, she ultimately dismisses it as a cash sex a pun to signifying that sex is not thinkable within the terms of the Anglophone gender. Uh, 
So here we have an inst instance of a small transatlantic translation war, or at least an instance of what Eric Fassin calls trouble genre, well, trouble genre, when he was trying to find an adequate French translation for the title of Judith Butler's Gender Trouble, um, which could be rendered in English genre trouble or trouble in the house of gender. But they finally published it as trouble dans les genres, pluralizing the genders. And you just get massive instability around all these terms. Um, what comes through, for example, is not only the non-equivalence of gender to genre or sex to sex with an E, but also the need for the term gender to call itself differently in different languages. And we asked Judith Butler to write about this in a supplement to the gender entry. There we go. And here I really am winding down. And she agreed, arguing that to call itself differently, gender needs to translate the language of unconscious articulation seated in these psychic drives. And if you just jump down to the bottom, she says, the question may well not be what gender am I, but rather what does gender want of me? Or even whose desire is being carried through the assignment of gender that I have received and how can I possibly respond? Quick, give me a way to translate. So here you can see she gives herself a way to translate by doing things with sex and gender untranslatables. And one can take away from this example a general impetus towards using translation to rethink the problem of gender and genre and sex as a kind of naming trouble that exceeds debate over the sex-gender conceptual divide. The question, what genre are you, may seem somewhat absurd, but it points up to the, the extent to which genre encompasses sex and gender the grammatical sexing of nouns and pronouns, and the fusion of corporeality and ontology in acts of agency. Mm -hmm.